Okay, I've been promising to make a video on what voltage and electricity is for pilots because nobody really knows. Uh, it's not something that's, uh, uh, that pilots are educated about very well, if at all. Um, the uh, AMP mechanics seem to know it pretty good, but um, pilots don't. I uh, studied electrical engineering in college, so I'm going to give you uh, the basics of what you need to know as a pilot to uh, understand electricity in your airplanes. First thing I'm going to teach you is the basic terms. Uh, let's make sure we get these straight. Current um, has the letter designation I, and the units are amps. Okay, current is the flow of electrons through your wire. Let's just say this is a light bulb, and the current is these little electrons going around through the light bulb and back to the start. So current is the flow of electricity. Easy. Resistance is the inhibition to that flow. So we have resistance. Resistance has the unit ohms and uh, the letter designation for resistance is not I. Like current is I, resistance is R. Okay? The unit is ohms and it's a Greek omega symbol. Okay, now, so you have your circuit here, like this, and your light bulb has resistance. So we can, we can get rid of this light bulb here, and we can draw in the symbol of a resistor, which is these jagged lines like this. We can say that's R, and the resistance, this is an omega, might equal something like 1,000 ohms. R equals 1,000 ohms, okay? Now, voltage is the one that confuses everybody. Voltage is the force of pushing the electricity around. It's an actual force. It's an electromotive force. You can also write it as EMF. It is a force, okay? So if you have, let's say you have a car battery here, okay? And you have a positive terminal and you have a negative terminal. Sorry, I don't have black, I only have purple. Okay, there is a force in between these terminals that wants to push electrons uh, one way or the other. I forget which way it is, but it doesn't, doesn't even matter. That force is always there. The resistance of air keeps the electrons from moving. If you put these terminals very close, you would get a little tiny spark if it was like just 12 volts. Because that force is always there even though you can't see it. It's voltage. And voltage adds in series. So if you take a bunch of batteries and you put wire between these batteries from the negative to the positive terminal, uh, you get to add the voltages. So now instead of one push, it's two pushes, and that equals 24 volts. Uh, but it's an electromotive force. And that's all it is. It wants to push electrons through whatever medium it is. If it's got resistance, it might not push electrons through at all. If it's got uh, no resistance, it's gonna push all the electrons it can all at once. Okay, let's have some fun measuring some voltage. Nine volt batteries should measure nine volts. Now the positive is there and the negative is there. So we'll just go ahead and check this out. So a fully charged battery, 9.24 volts. Now, if we put batteries in a series, uh, we can add voltage. So these nine volts are pretty cool because you can connect them together. All right, I've connected uh, 10 batteries in series. Uh, they're nine volt batteries, so what should we get? Hey, 92 volts. Nice. Now, in an airplane in a car, the negative ground of the battery is connected to the frame of the airplane and the car as well. So all the electricity actually travels through the frame of the plane or the car. And uh, if, you ever, if you go open your car hood and you look at the battery, you'll see the negative terminal is connected to the frame. So uh, the reason for that is you don't have to run a negative wire all around the airplane to connect up everything. You can just you can run a positive wire through the plane and then connect uh, connect your device to positive and then the other one just to the plane. So it uh, makes it super easy and it saves weight. 
Okay, all airplanes are pretty much set up like this. They have a generator and they have a battery. Some airplanes have an alternator, which makes AC current, but it's then turned into DC current, um, and it ends up just like this. So let's just call this a generator. Okay, so the generator is going to have a higher voltage than the battery. The reason for that is battery is this is just a bunch of acid and electrodes and stuff like that. It's just a chemical process. It doesn't care if, if it has 14 volts in it. All it will do is just continuously charge this battery. So only if your generator dies will you have power coming out of your battery. So generator runs at 14 volts. It controls the system. So your whole system is going to be on 14 volts. Now remember, the negative part of the, of the system is attached to the frame of the airplane. So the electricity travels through the frame of the airplane. And then from the positive side of your uh, system, of your battery and generator, you have wires running throughout your plane powering your radios and powering your lights, powering your uh, elevator trim if you have electric trim. That's how an airplane system is usually set up. I had to change shirts. I had soaked through my other one. It's just too hot out here in Florida. So now we're going to do a little demonstration because uh, I don't want to do everything just on the whiteboard. Uh, this is a 12 volt fan. I'm going to go ahead and power it up as if we were powering up equipment on the airplane and show you what this is all about with real equipment. Now this fan has a bunch of wires. Um, only two of them are the uh, positive and negative. The other ones control it to turn it on and off or change the speed, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take my uh, meter here and I'm gonna switch it over to resistance and we're gonna measure the resistance of this fan and listen to somebody mow their lawn at the same time. What do we got? We got one mega ohm, one million ohms and eight and some change there. So 1.084 mega ohms. That's a lot of resistance. So the resistance is equal to 1 million ohms. We have the resistance, we have the voltage. Now we're going to calculate the current. A very important uh, thing here is called Ohm's law, which is the voltage equals the current times the resistance. Ohm's law. V equals IR. That's the most important thing of this whole video. V equals IR. Remember that. Okay, so let's do some calculations here. We're gonna divide both sides by R, and we're gonna get V over R equals I, or 14 volts over 1 million ohms equals 0.000014 amps. You can move this decimal over three times, and you can call it 0.0014 milliamps and that's what the current going through the circuit is now as a pilot we don't know have to know what the current uh, in our wires are we don't have to know the resistance in fact in 30 years of flying i've never seen resistance of anything so it's not something you need to know but what you do need to know is that uh, if the current is too great going through the system it's going to melt these wires it's going to melt your unit here so what happens is if if a wire inadvertently crosses over here. Oh, guess what? Resistance goes to zero. And your voltage remains the same at 14. 14 divided by zero equals infinity. So we have infinity current going through here, which melts everything. That's why we have a fuse. The fuse is the first thing to melt. If you have a circuit breaker, it heats it up and pops it and disconnects the circuit. And that's why you have these things in here. And that's why also why you don't reset it after it pops unless the checklist says to do that. That's a short circuit right there. Now I've built something to match this. Uh, the, let me explain this to you. This is, this is power supply. This is gonna be our generator, okay? Come down here. This is a uh, rechargeable 12 volt battery uh, that I stole from my uh, son's RC car and this aluminum represents the airplane. So we have the negative going, going from the generator, connected to the battery, and then going to the skin of the plane. The positive coming from the generator down to the battery, and also a wire going down to what's gonna be connected to our fan. So let's fire this up. Okay, there's 14 volts right there. That's the current. So the current's charging the battery currently because I don't have the fan connected. Now, I'm going to go ahead and connect the fan. And 
and now the fan is running. So we've got the battery being charged. Negative is connected to the plane and our equipment is running. So if we switch it off, of course, this is our switch. Battery still gets charged. We still got negative ground to the plane. One more thing I wanna show you. What's a watt? Well, a watt is a unit of power, just like horsepower. In fact, there's a direct conversion. One horsepower equals 745 watts. Okay? Now, how do you find a watt from, say, voltage and current? Well, volts times amps equals watts. So uh, let's take our, fa our fan, for example. We, have, we were running at 0 0.0014 milliamps. So that's 14 volts times 0 0.1234501 equals 0 0.0000196 watts. That fan doesn't take much power, does it? It just so happens I have an electric car that I can show you some stuff with. So uh, without further ado, let's go drive the Tesla and get a demonstration of what watts or kilowatts, kilowatt is a 1000 watts, can do. All right, in the Tesla, I have a gauge on the right side of the zero that uh, shows kilowatts being used by the electric motor. And uh, when it's uh, orange, it's used. And when it's green, it's recharging the battery. So it goes up to 320, uh, it's 320 kilowatts equals about 420 horsepower. So let's see how, what 320 kilowatts does. Here we go. Yeehaw. That's 320 kilowatts in three seconds. <laughs> okay, that about does it for uh, this video. Uh, be sure to join me in part two where I dive into some of the wiring diagrams of the airplanes and go in the cockpit and show you a few things uh, roundabouts uh, in one of the jets I fly. And um, we'll uh, just uh, take this a little bit further.